What's going on, man? What's up? And welcome back to another video. We got another reaction video today. Another three true Starbucks horror story animated by IMR Scary Tales. If you want to see the original video, of course, it's going to be down low in the description. And <clears throat> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I just hit 2K subscribers. That's pretty crazy. I didn't think I would get it now. I mean, you know, all the stuff, the emotional stuff, whatever. But thank you. And I appreciate y'all. And I'm probably going to do like a video for it or whatever soon. But let's go ahead and get into this one. This is a scary experience that I had when I <clears throat> used to work at Starbucks. Shout out Starbucks. I was an employee there several years ago and worked there for almost two years. This was towards the end of my time working there. One time I was working a closing shift. We closed at 8 p.m. every night. And generally, I would stay for a few minutes after finishing tasks on this night. For the last few hours that we were open, I was working with one other coworker. Things were pretty quiet for most of the day, but when it got to be at around 6 p.m., it was especially quiet. We had very few customers come in and during the seventh hour had nobody at our location. And it wasn't even that busy of an area, but a lot of people would still go there during the morning usually. Yeah, we're boycotting right now. A few people would come oh, speaking, and work on their laptops why didn't it just, or whatever not, throughout the afternoon. Speaking speaking of Starbucks, are y'all isn't, isn't people supposed to be boycotting Starbucks? I don't drink coffee, so I wouldn't go to Starbucks anyway, but aren't we supposed to be boycotting Starbucks because they're not cool right now. Are y'all boycotting Starbucks? Comment below if you are. If you're not, you're, you're lame. You're not, you're not hip. You're not peak. You're not, not pushing time, positivity. No. Which I did not have a problem with. We were able to start cleaning and stuff a little bit early and it became apparent that we probably wouldn't get any more customers for the rest of the night. That maybe. Look at, look at, look at that spot, Jim. Hold on, look at this spot right here. That shit is dirty. She's not cleaning nothing. She's just wiping the mop on the floor. There's no suds, no no labyrinth, no nothing. Just just dirt and mop. That's bad employee. She should get fired for that. 7.45 or so, I told my coworker that she could go home and I would finish up with everything. I knew she was in school and had a lot of homework to do. So she left and then it was just me. That. Have you ever done homework? At probably 7.55, I went into the back room. I was doing some of the normal tasks that I would do when we closed. I spent about two or three minutes in the back room area, and then I was going to go back out when we had a large swinging door with a small window in it that separated behind the counter from the back room area. As I was about to walk through, though, I just barely noticed something through the window that made me stop there. It appeared to be someone behind the counter. This was really strange. I hadn't heard anyone come inside or anything, and it wasn't my coworker. It was a man, and <coughs> he was somewhat tall, or at least a lot taller than I am. At first, he looked Bleh. like he was wearing a hat, but when he turned a little, I saw that it was a mask, a full ski mask, and he was near the cash register at that point. I realized that this guy was probably trying to rob us. I quickly moved back from the door and went farther into the back room. I felt like an idiot for not just locking the doors and closing early. He entered when I was in the back and didn't even notice as I walked farther back there. I suddenly heard footsteps walking towards the door where I was. We had a decent sized back area, but there's still not a whole lot of space there. Uh, mostly it was filled with various boxes of all sizes and extra supplies, such mm. as ingredients and, and cups. No cubby the holes, first thing no that hiding I thought spots. to do was to find a large box in the back corner. Being the small female that I am, I jumped inside of it while trying not to make any noise. I'm it. barely five foot tall and fit inside just fine. Then I grabbed a don't piss me off, bro. She's not fitting in there fine, bro. Look at her. Her whole body's exposed. I thought she, I thought she meant a big box, bro. It's some bullshit. Another large She's empty gonna box die. on the shelf next to me and covered myself with it. However, the man bro. did not immediately enter the no back room. No common sense. I was expecting the door to she open a box for the entire time box. I was Upside getting in the down. box, but it didn't. I'm not sure what he did, but he remained on the other side of the door for a little while. I had my phone in my pocket still, luckily, and I took it out and called the police. 
Probably 30 seconds after I called, I heard the door to the back room open. I hung up the call with the police prematurely as soon as I heard that I didn't want the guy to hear everything, even though I had been talking as quietly as I could. All that I had been able to say was the Starbucks location that I was at, and that I thought I was being robbed, and the operator was asking me a question when I hung up the phone. I hoped that the police would still come and arrive quickly when the man entered the back room. He yeah, walked looking in for some coffee. and then seemed to stop just moments later. I heard him walking closer to me. As he did, he mumbled a few things that I couldn't make out. My heart was racing like crazy and I hoped that he wouldn't find me. Uh, now, I was hidden pretty good, but it was still a terrifying situation to be in. He got within probably 10 feet of me and then turned and walked back a short time later. I heard the door behind the counter open and close again. After that, I didn't hear a whole lot. I stayed hidden where I was and didn't dare leave. Smart. I texted some friends and family and was in the box for maybe 30 minutes. Then I heard some more noises coming from inside. Before long, I realized that it was the police. I found out that the guy had left before they got there. Duh, there was nothing to stop I told them everything I could, and we went right no behind the counter for the cash register. He was wearing <clears> a ski mask the whole time, so it was impossible to tell his identity. He stole everything that was in the register and then left. After talking with the police, I was finally able to go home. I found out later that the man who robbed the store was caught. I didn't want to work any closing shifts for a while afterwards, though. I think I worked there for another month or two before I quit. Sometimes I wonder if the guy was watching the store from outside and saw me go into the back. I really have no idea, though. Either way, Probably. it was good timing that I wasn't back there when he entered. I wouldn't want to know what would have happened. I currently work at Starbucks, and I've been working there for a little over a year. This is something that took place last summer. It was a crazy experience, to say the least. It all that happened one things. very busy morning. I had been working since we opened, but at this point it was probably a little bit after 8 a.m. Right Lots of people were coming in and ordering, and there were five of us working, trying to keep up. We were doing a pretty good job. I thought some people order Starbucks online and pick it up or use things like DoorDash or Uber Eats. Between those and the people ordering in the store, there were several drinks on the counter. I remember seeing probably five drinks at least or a couple of food items that we sold, such as breakfast sandwiches. A few people were standing around waiting for their orders to be done as well. We didn't have a separate shelf for mobile or online orders at the time, which we have since added, so every order that was done just got placed on the counter. I remember as I put a drink down on the counter, I noticed one guy walking in. He had longer hair and a beard that looked unkempt. I turned around to keep working as we were very busy. A short time later, another order got added to the counter, and a couple of people had picked theirs up. I saw the man was now standing nearby. Probably five minutes later, I added another drink to the counter, which probably had about six or seven things on it. That's when I saw the man walk up at first. I assumed that he had ordered something online and was picking it up, but after the guy got right up to the counter, he took his arm oh. and knocked everything over. He used his arm like a brush, and within second seconds, every single drink that was on there got knocked over and spilled. Piss. It was a mess, and I couldn't believe what I was seeing. Afterwards, the man took a step back and started laughing like a maniac. A bunch of people around him were giving him dirty looks. Somebody asked him why he did that. Other than that, the place quickly became dead silent. Some black he just in there. kept laughing, as if it was the funniest thing ever. I was angry, but I knew that I couldn't lose my temper. For some reason, though, I took it upon myself to deal with the situation, probably because I was closest to the man. I took a few steps over to the guy and he looked at me. Before I said anything, the man said to me, what are you going to do about it? It was as if he was very proud of what he had done. I asked him to just leave. The guy said no. 
I thought that the guy must be crazy or something. Some other people were telling him that he should leave, and he turned to them and started defending himself. I went back to help another order that we were finishing up. Then we were going to try to figure out everything that needed to be remade. Probably just Dumps about 30 floor. seconds Nobody later, I heard the man moving closer. I looked and then saw him jumping over the counter. I walked over to him and told him to stop. Fake the man was now house. facing me and standing behind the counter where it was for employees only. I tried telling the man to leave, but clearly he wasn't going to listen. He then grabbed something off the shelf. It was a container of caramel or something, and then he threw it at me. It didn't really hurt, but I was afraid of what That's the man attack. would do next. It seemed very Fine. unpredictable. Somebody shouted to call the police, and the man then charged at me. He wasn't very big, and I was several inches taller than him. He ran into me, Fade. but with not a whole lot of force. It didn't knock me over or anything. I put my hands up to stop him, and then he fell over. He crashed into the counter behind us and to the right. I remembered when he was on the ground, he then yelled at me that he was going to sue me for assaulting him. Fuck no, a lot of people started first. leaving the building and nobody was trying to get coffee anymore. When the man stood back up, I pleaded with him to leave. He refused and tried to charge at me again. I grabbed the man by his arms and tried to force him to leave. I walked with him out and around the counter. I heard one of my co-workers say that the police were on their way. Everybody who was inside the restaurant left, and as I finally made it out from behind the counter, the man broke free from me. Obviously, I wasn't going to try to tackle him or anything. He then ran over to a table and stood behind it. All of my co-workers left the building as well as all of the customers. The police got there about two minutes later and we let them handle it. They were able to get the man out and leave the building. We ended up being closed for the next hour and finally opened a while later. That was by far the craziest thing that has ever happened to me while working there. How do you feel about that story too? The first two stories are kind of bad, no cap. I used to work at home from my job and when I did that, I would walk to Starbucks. Every day there was a Starbucks that I could walk to and it would take about 20 minutes. So I would wake up and then make the walk to Starbucks and then head back before work. It allowed me to get my steps in and also get my morning coffee. Well, I did just this about every day for probably two or three months until something caused me to stop. It was a regular weekday and I left my house at 7 a.m. For the daily walk to Starbucks, the walk there was fine. I would take sidewalks the entire way and back. Most of the roads were usually pretty quiet, but the two roads closest to Starbucks were a little bit busier. After I got my Starbucks, I ordered my usual coffee and then waited inside until it was done. Starbucks was somewhat busy with it being the morning and all, but as I waited, I just browsed around on my phone. Soon, my coffee was done and I took it and started to walk back now. When I was about halfway home, I was walking on the left side of the road on the sidewalk. The street was an onland residential street, and there was a mixture of apartment buildings and houses. I remembered that as I was walking, this car came down the street in the same direction that I was going. It then slowed down. I expected it to pass me, but it didn't. It was a gray sedan and seemed sort of old. I'm not much of a car person though, so I don't know the exact year, make, or model. I noticed that the car was traveling at around the same speed that I was walking. I didn't know why though. None of the people that I knew had that kind of car, so it couldn't yeah, have been one of my friends or something. As the car continued to go at around the same speed as me, I felt sort of nervous. After maybe 30 seconds of this, the car actually started to pull over to the side of the road and in front of me. Oh. I wanted to get away from them. I had just passed a sidewalk that went between two apartment buildings. To my left, as the car was pulling over, I turned around and went down the sidewalk. The car would have no way of following me down there. I just yeah, hoped that whoever was driving wouldn't get out and go after me or something. When I walked a decent ways down the sidewalk between buildings, I didn't hear anybody walking behind me or anything. 
I stayed there for a little while and then went back. When I did, nobody was there and the car was gone. After that, I kept on going with my walk home. I made it back okay and didn't really know what to make of the whole situation. I was just glad that the car didn't continue to follow me. So, for the next few days, I continued to walk to Starbucks every morning. That one incident didn't stop me. I didn't even consider not going. However, sometime during the next week, I saw the car again. It was almost the same exact situation as before. I was walking down the same sidewalk on the same street. I saw the car again slowly drive a little past me. I thought to myself, not this again, when I saw it. I sped up and started walking quickly. The car maintained speed with me again. I looked over to see who was driving, but couldn't tell from my angle. Coming up ahead was the same sidewalk between buildings that I had gone down before. When I got there, I went down the same sidewalk again as I did before. I walked almost all the way down and then went back hoping to see that the car was gone again like before. When I got to the corner and looked around, though, the car was still there. It was parked on the side of the road. I didn't see anybody around it on the sidewalk, though. Still, I didn't want to take any chances, so I walked back down the sidewalk between the buildings from there. I took another way home. It took a while longer, but I didn't see that car again for the rest of the day now. After that, I really should have stopped walking to Starbucks every morning, but I didn't. You're a I kept going, nigga. and the very next sorry, day man. I, I walked to Starbucks like without a problem on the way back. I was very careful to watch out for the car. In fact, I took a separate way home from the road I had seen it on before. Eventually, I was able to make it back to my street and to my house. When I got inside my house, literally seconds after I closed the door, I saw the car. It was driving down my usual quiet street. It was traveling at a very low speed. The car did not stop at my house though, but kept going. When it went out of sight, I kept watching out the window. <laughs> About a minute that? later, it came back, but once more, it kept going past my house. I was careful so that whoever was driving wouldn't see me through the window. After that, I finally stopped walking to Starbucks. Luckily, I haven't seen the car since. I have a few theories of who it was, but I don't know exactly. I think it might have been someone who saw me at Starbucks oh, maybe multiple at times. Thumbnail. It also could have been a random person. They must have somehow followed me to my street. But I don't believe they know which house was mine. I feel lucky that nothing bad happened. Honestly, my honest opinion, these stories kind of weren't that good this time. But, you know, you can't you can't hit every time. Sometimes you're going to miss. So it's understandable. But I hope that y'all enjoyed this one. If y'all did, like, comment, subscribe, share, turn the post notification bells on, all that good stuff. Again, man, thank y'all so much for 2000 subscribers. Thank thank you. Thank you. It means a lot. Peace, love, and positivity, and I will catch y'all in the next one, man. It's two options in this world. Is you gon' win or lose? Is you gon' take the risk or not? You know you gotta choose. Yeah, I can't keep one, so all my bitches come in twos.